So hey guys and welcome back to Born Traveller. Around this video, this is your digital nomads guide to Istanbul in Turkey. Okay, let's get started. Istanbul is a great place to base yourself as a digital nomad in the world. Not only does it have great accommodation, food and internet, but also offers great attractions, sites and things to do and see. There's endless things and there's such a diverse culture in this wonderful country of Turkey. Okay, let's start with visas. So actually visas are pretty easy for Turkey. Uh, most countries in the world get 90 days visa free on arrival. So you don't really need to worry too much about getting a visa. However, it's always best to check online or you could always go to your local embassy in your home country. It doesn't matter if you visit Istanbul in the summer or the winter, it's a great place to visit. You'll have a great time. Temperatures range in the summer from about 30 to 35 degrees and in the winter they can get down to around zero degrees. Getting to Istanbul is very easy via one of the two international airports it offers. Istanbul is one of the major international airport hubs of the world so flights are very cheap and normally very inconvenient from almost any destination you're flying from. Once you arrive in Istanbul it's actually very easy to leave the airport via a bus or a train or even a taxi however the taxis can be quite expensive compared to the buses which operate almost 24 7. Getting around the city is very cheap and convenient via their underground metro bus taxi or even a tram system. As a digital nomad I've actually found Istanbul one of the easiest and most convenient locations to ever travel. So let's talk about currency. Well, the Turkish Lira now is trading at 17.95 to the US dollar, which is almost five times what it was four years ago. When I was there a year ago, it was around 10 Lira to the dollar. So you can see how much value it's lost over the last year. So as of June 2022, Turkey is a fabulous place to travel as a digital nomad. When it comes to accommodation in Istanbul, you do have a wide range of accommodation available to you. Starting from hostels, which range from about five or six dollars a night, to hotels, which can, if you really search on booking.com, you can find some decent deals from around $15. However, some of the rooms may be not as good as what they see in the pictures, as they are basement rooms and they can be full of mold. Probably your best option as a digital nomad is to look on Airbnb. I would recommend staying for a month that way you'll get the discount. Book at least 28 days and then you'll get the huge discounts that can be on offer. Normally you can find a place in Istanbul for around four to five hundred dollars a month uh, for a one bedroom apartment. Wi-Fi in Turkey is pretty good. Uh, overall in your hostel or hotel or your Airbnb you should get speeds between 5 and 100 megabytes depending on the connection that they paid for. I would say for the average digital nomad including teachers I think this, these connections are pretty good however if you are like a graphic designer and you're trying to upload gigabytes and download gigabytes of data you may struggle in this country. When it comes to buying a sim card I would recommend either buying a Turkcell or Vodafone sim. Prices range from about two to 300 lira for around 20 gigabytes worth of data, as well as 200 minutes worth of calls. But the packages do vary from carrier to carrier. When I visited Istanbul, I really enjoyed the Turkish food. I thought it was some of the most delicious food I've ever tasted. However, my experience of Turkey and Istanbul was that although there was some great Turkish food on offer, there wasn't much international cuisine so it depends on your appetite as to whether it'll be good for you or not if you eat street food you can eat for about two dollars per meal however if you eat in restaurants that kind of jumps up to around three to six dollars per meal but it's still very affordable for international standards however if you do get an airbnb you can always cook for yourself and the supermarkets are stocked with lots of international food from around the world as well as good fruit and vegetables tea and coffee in general are very cheap However, I did find alcohol to be quite expensive, around $3 per beer. When it comes to sightseeing in Istanbul, the first thing you want to see is the Sofia Aya. It's one of the largest mosques in the world, 
and it is a spectacular sight to see. The second part is actually the grounds of the uh, mosque. There's lots of uh, ancient uh, stonework and obelisks from around uh, Europe, which is quite interesting. There's a lot of history to learn about the mosque and the history of Istanbul. The third is the Galalta Tower. You can get some absolutely amazing views from this tower. It's really worth going up there and it's not too expensive. The fourth is the Grand Bazaar, which is one of the oldest bazaars in the world. It has fantastic shops and you can spend a whole day looking around it. The fifth one is to take a boat trip across the sea. I think it's really worth it and it's not expensive. It's about 10 lira, so it's really worth taking it. I have to say when it comes to shopping, I found Istanbul one of the best places in the world to go shopping. Not only did I find great markets with good value clothes, but also electronic markets. So you can pretty much pick up anything you want, including obviously souvenirs and things like this. You can't visit Istanbul without checking out the Great Grand Bazaar, which offers so much shopping, it's hard to explain how much there is there. As with any international city, Istanbul offers great nightlife for any age. I found the clubs and the bars to be some of the best in the world. However, if you do want something a little bit slower paced, walk down to the river and there are some beautiful bars and restaurants where you can have a coffee or a beer or get some food and chat with your friends. In terms of safety, I never felt unsafe in Istanbul. However, it is a very international city with people from all over the world. So I would say be very cautious with your valuables when you're out and about. Uh, I think the most danger you would have in this city is pickpockets. But in general, it is a very safe city and as long as you take the normal precautions, I would say as a digital nomad, you won't have any problems. Next, I'd like to talk about insurance. Never travel to any country in the world without travel insurance. I can guarantee 100% if you don't have travel insurance, you will have serious problems when you're abroad. I experienced it on my first ever round the world trip where I got pneumonia in Peru, and it would not have been a nice experience without travel insurance. The last thing you want to be worrying about when you're ill abroad is money and can you pay for it? So the website we're looking at right now is World Nomads. And this would be my first choice for any digital nomad I would go with World Nomads. They have a really good reputation and more conveniently, you can buy this insurance from any country in the world, even after you've started traveling. It's really important to understand how in travel insurance works. So read the small print and do your research. The one thing you must make sure is that your travel insurance has repatriation insurance. This is basically a medical flight home. These flights can cost up to $100,000, depending where you are in the world, as they require a medical doctor on board. If you don't have this in your policy, you or your family may have to raise up to $100,000 to get you home, especially if you're in a third world country. The other travel insurance I'd recommend is Safety Wings. Both of these companies offer similar insurance. However, the prices are slightly different and how they insure you is different. I'll leave a link in the description below so you can make the best choice for yourself. So let's break down the living costs of how much it will cost you for one day as a digital nomad in Istanbul. Accommodation ranges from $6 to $20, depending on if you get a hostel or an Airbnb. Your phone should cost you around $1 a day. Food ranges from about $3 to $10 per day. Sightseeing per day will probably work at about $2 a day. And transport, again, about $2 a day. So those are your basic costs for living in Istanbul. So hopefully by now you'll know that Istanbul is a fantastic place for a digital nomad. I would really recommend it. I would say the ideal time to spend here is one to two months. You really need to explore the city and see everything it has to offer. Okay guys, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please remember to like and subscribe to the channel. If you've got any comments, leave them below and I'll see you next time.